Hello and welcome to this short little video from chapter 2. This is going to cover questions 6 through 10. So last week we just did one problem. Here we're going to do five of them. The purpose of this block of questions is to have you create your own histogram. And the last part, number 10, uh, question 10, is to have you interpret the histogram in terms of skew. So I really want to see this data into Excel. So I'm going to highlight, copy it. And the reason I want it in Excel is because at some point I'm going to have to calculate the minimum value and the maximum value. While that's pretty easy with a nice little block of data, in the future we may need to calculate the mean or the median or the standard deviation of the data. And that's not so easy to do from just a block of 60 data points. So here's Excel. Um, I copied in Windows, that's Control C. In Macintoshes, that's Command C. And I'm going to paste in Windows, that's Control V. Uh, v is in victory. In Max, it's Command V. So there's the data. And we don't need it for this, but let's go ahead and calculate the mean of this data. Uh, the function in Excel to calculate mean is average. So equals A V E R A G E, open parenthesis. The equal tells Excel that you're going to give it a formula. The name of the formula in this case is average. Formulas require data uh, offset by parentheses. And the data we're going to give it is all of this data. So click and drag. And notice as you clicked and dragged, the data uh, cells were uh, dropped into that. Close parentheses equals. So the average rating is 27.5. Again, these numbers may be uh, generated by the computer. So my numbers may not agree with yours. To get the median, it's equal median, again, open parenthesis, highlight, and parenthesis. The mean is 27.5. The median is 28. Standard deviation, stdev dot s. The dot s indicates that it's a sample standard deviation. And that's appropriate here because we are working with a sample of the data. We're not working with the entire population of data. We're only working with 60 ratings. So the standard deviation is 8.44. Now for this problem, we need to calculate at one point the maximum value and the minimum value. To calculate the maximum, the function is max. Again, highlight all the data and parenthesis. So the largest rating is 40. The smallest min is going to be 15. So that's how to do some data analysis in Excel. We'll come in a little handy here, much more handy in the future. So let's remember 40 and 15. Um, that was the wrong thing to minimize. So here we are. A. Find the number of classes that should be used to construct a frequency distribution and histogram for the bottle design ratings. Well, we know there's 60 data points, because that's given to us. We could have also ca uh, counted everything. It's 6 rows, 10 columns. So we go to table 2.5 in the book, or it's nicely linked here. And data points, 60 of them, means we're going to have 6 classes. 6 classes. I can make that one bigger, too. 7, what's the class length? And we need to round the answer to the next whole number. Class length, it doesn't give us any hints. So let's go to the book and figure this out. Um, and then we notice, hey, this kind of is example 2.2 on page 42. And in step 2, find the class length, we discover that the approximate class length is the largest measurement minus the smallest measurement all divided by the number of classes. So in this case, it's going to equal 40 minus 15 divided by 6. And we're supposed to round it to the next, not to the nearest, but to the next whole number. So it's going to be 5. The widths are going to be 5. Or the class length is going to be 5. 
Now that we got this, eight, we got a large table to fill in. Lower is 15, upper is 20, which is 15 plus 20. The lower will also be 20. 20 plus 15, uh, 20 plus 5 is 25. 30. If we did everything correctly, the largest value should be less than or equal to 45. The maximum value is 40. We're good to go. And now we just need to determine the midpoints. 15 to 20. Midpoint of that is 17.5. Midpoint of this is 22.5. 27.5. Thirty-seven point five, forty-two point five. To get the midpoint, it's lower plus upper divided by two. Lower plus upper divided by two. The width is going to be five in each case, and the frequency. Well, now we have to go back to the data and see how many data points are between fifteen and twenty. Hmm, we've got 20 overlapping. What do we do when we have a data value of 20? Do we put it in this row or this row? Well, from table 2.6 in the book, which is page 43, we know that the way that this, this is uh, used is that it means that it's the data value is 15 and less than 20. 20 to less than 25, 25 to less than 30, which means the value 30 would go in this row. So let's bring up our Excel. It's 15 to less than 20, 15 to less than 20, that counts. No, no. Yes. Yes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So the frequency is thirteen. The next will be twenty to less than twenty five. So this next one will include all values that are twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. So that frequency is going to be twelve. Continuing on, we can fill out the rest of the table. And there we go, filling it in. 13 in the first bin, 12 in the second bin, 7 in the third bin, 11 in the fourth, 13 in the fifth, 4 in the last. If you added these up, you'll get 60. And it's a nice little check that 60 has to also be the sample size. Because theoretically, you just binned every single value here. All right, so there is our frequency table. Now, that's D. Let's go to 9. Choose the frequency histogram for the ratings data. OK, these all look kind of, ooh, this one's definitely not correct, because uh, 35 to 50, no. So let's look at these, 25, 29. Uh, it's got to be the first one. Just looking at the possible, the range of ratings, it's got to be that first one. But let's double check. Well, this one doesn't even go down to 15, and we've got several down to 15. So let's look. 13 for that first bin. Does it look like there's 13? Height of this first bar is 13. 12 in the second, 7 in the third, 12 and 7 matches. 11, 13, and 4. Um, 11, 13, 4. Bingo. 
So that's the histogram. And let's go to problem 10. Distribution shape is skewed left. Remember, the direction of the skew is the direction of the longest tail. If there's not an apparent tail, then there's no skew. And you're looking at this, and it looks like a U shape here for most of the data. So I'm saying it does not look skewed. If the data, if these two bars were lower and you had a nice little trend like this, then I would say it would be skewed right because this direction is right or skewed positive. If these two were much lower, like 2 and 4, and you had this shape to it, that would be skewed left because the tail would be to the left. It would also be called skewed negative. And that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. Talk to you later. Bye.